Hi, Dale coming to you from Bronk Build headquarters again. And in this video, I'm going to show you 10 tools under 10 bucks. This isn't going to be one of those must have 10 tools under 10 bucks. Instead, it's just 10 tools that happen to be under $10 that I've either been using for a while or tools that I have really wanted to try. You might be surprised with tool number six and tool number nine. And I've heard rumor going around the shop that there might be a bonus tool under 10 bucks at the end of the video. So let's get started. Come on, let's go. First up for $6.29 is this little round over plane. It's supposed to give perfect round overs to the edge of all of your boards. Let's check it out, see how it does. Now I am pretty much a beginner when it comes with hand planes, but I felt right off the bat, this one was a little bit difficult to kind of get it set up. It basically comes with the blade and this little wedge that you got to kind of knock into place. The problem is, is as soon as you get the blade where you want it and you get the wedge in and you start kind of giving it a couple knocks to lock it in, the blade moves. So it's very difficult to kind of get that plate, that blade really lined up. And I don't think I did a great job, but let's give it a go. I've got a piece of poplar lined up in here. We're just going to kind of go give it some long strips here. Might be taking too big of a bite, but like I said, it's pretty difficult to get this thing lined up. So there's one. Let me try it coming back, see if it's any easier pulling it toward me. Actually, it's a lot easier pulling it toward me. So I'm not sure how easy that is to see on camera. It did give a decent little round over, but it's got a flat edge here and it wasn't really rounded evenly across. Um, I'm going to have to say this is going to need a lot of sanding. I think if you can see that, see if I can get that to focus in on that a bit. It really leaves a ledge and it could be because I couldn't get the blade perfectly straight, perfectly flat. But like I said, using that wedge, as soon as you had to start tapping it in there, the blade would move every time. Now I could have sharpened it, but I have no idea how to sharpen a round over blade. So I didn't use that overall for 629. I'm going to have to say it was very inexpensive, but I'm probably never going to use it. Next up is this magnetic wristband. Now this is one that I have been really wanting to try this one, 999. Let's check it out. First thing I want to test is just how well the screws will stay onto this magnet. So I'm just going to throw some on here. Things are sticking pretty good so far. Let's get a couple longer ones. That seems pretty good. All right. I gotta say, I like this. I definitely think I'll be using this in the future, especially on a ladder or something like that. This actually works really, really well. Thumbs up on this one, $9.99. Number three, we have this set of plug cutters. These are $6.99 and they come in a set of four. You get a quarter inch, a three eight inch, a one half inch, and a five eighths inch. And I would say the first downside before I even use them is these came coated in a bit of goo that I had to clean off. I'm not sure why, but no one likes grabbing a tool and having a bunch of goo on their hand. To test this, I'm going to use the 3 8 inch and I'm going to be cutting the plugs in some red oak. As you can see, there was a lot of smoke when drilling those out, but to pop them out, you can either use a bandsaw or just a flathead screwdriver and just kind of pop them out.
Now I've drilled three 3 8 inch holes in the same block of wood. I'm going to add some glue and go ahead and put the plugs in. This one you can see broke a little bit as I was snapping it out, but it should still work okay. You can see it actually did quite a good job. If I would have paid a little bit more attention to the grain direction, it would even look nicer, but it filled the hole nice and tight. Should work great. Okay, there you go. This one I've got to say I was pretty surprised with. I did not think these were going to work very well, but I tried a couple plugs from each of them and they were all true to size. They fit perfect in the corresponding hole. The only thing I worry about is you saw when I was drilling into the red oak, which is hardwood, but it's not the hardest of hardwood, it produced a lot of smoke. So I don't know how long these are going to stay sharp, but for $6.99, get yourself some. They work pretty darn good. Next on the list for $8.99 is the center punch. It's automatic, has spring-loaded action, it's adjustable impact, and even comes with a spare tip. If you ever need to do precise holes, a center punch is definitely on the list. I'm going to mark an X on this scrap wood, and I'm first going to try and drill a hole right on the X without a center punch. And you can see that first, it isn't always easy to get the tip of the bit right on the X, and then you have to deal with a lot of drift. For the second X, I'm going to use the center punch to punch a small hole exactly where you want the tip of the drill to go. When using this on an actual project, I'd take a bit more care to get that punch absolutely exactly on the X. But you can see here that it significantly reduces the chance of drift and makes it much, much easier to get the bit right on the mark. For $8.99, this is a great deal. I really like this one because it has this nice rounded top so I can easily use it one-handed, nice and comfortably. Next on the list for $6.58 is this painter's tool. Now, a lot of people call it a painter's tool. Some people a six in one, a seven in one, nine in one. This is actually a 14 in one and it isn't just for painters. Now I'm not going to be going over all 14 tools because frankly, I don't know all 14 of them. And I am going to go over the useful painting tools first, which first is just to get the paint caps off. Use the flat end, work it around, comes off easy. Next, putting it back on, you can use the strike plate. Just give it a couple taps and it's locked back in for good. Next is using this rounded portion on your paint rollers. I've got this little mini one. You just kind of scrape it down. It scrapes all the paint off. Works great, saves a lot of paint, gets all the paint off the roller. And it doesn't just work for this size. You can also use it for these really small ones. It would work just as good. Next, you can use this little eye drop shape hole right here to pull a nail. Now, if you had a bunch of nails to pull, obviously you'd want to go get a nail pull or a hammer or something like that. But for just one or two at a time, it works great. Just get the head of the nail in this top corner piece here and then lift up. This one's even got a half inch and a five eighths inch socket. I've never used this to tighten a bolt. Probably would work okay in a pinch, but really for those, I'm going to skip that and just grab my socket set. In the handle, this one also has a little place to keep a bit for a Phillips head and on the other side, a flathead screw. And I actually have used the Phillips a couple of times when I've been up on a ladder and needed a screwdriver that I didn't know I needed, but I had this in my tool belt, grabbed it, and it did work great. This has a little friction fit to place it in there as well as a magnet to hold it in place, which is nice. So you just pop it out, you put it in here, which has got also got a magnet to hold it in and you unscrew. 
Now, like I said, I used this when I was on a ladder and I didn't have a screwdriver I didn't know I was gonna need, so it came in handy. If I had a bunch of screws to take out, I certainly would not use this, but for taking off maybe face plates, things like that, it works great. Other than the painting tasks that I've already showed you, probably the most used tasks I use this for is scraping glue. This is a nice, sharp, edge right here and it really is good for scraping the glue off of glue ups also scraping old paint off anything like that it works awesome as a scraper and this little edge right here this can really get into the corners to help you get that glue out of corner glue ups and i'm sure there's dozens and dozens of other little tasks that this can handle and for six dollars and 58 cents this is always nearby me it really is the utility tool Next on the list for $9.97, this one may surprise you a little bit, but they're fine point tweezers. If any of you out there work with plywood like I do, you know that these little rough edges, those are just going to end up in your hand with some splinters. It's just going to happen if you're working with plywood. So in the shop, it's always a good idea to keep yourself a pair of very, very fine point tweezers. Look at how sharp and pointed these tweezers are. Now, I'm not about to give myself a, a, a sliver for this video because, frankly, I don't want to cry on this video. But just know that with these very extremely fine point tweezers, you would be able to really dig in and pull out however deep a splinter goes. It may sound silly, but having these in the shop is really a great idea. You guys should already have a first aid kit very readily accessible. Go ahead and pick yourself up one of these super fine point set of tweezers, throw them in there. You'll be glad you did for under 10 bucks. Next on the list for $7.99 is this pencil set. And this isn't just a normal pencil set. It's got the normal graphite lead, but it's also got two different colors, a yellow and a red. Let me show you where that comes in handy. If you're marking on lighter colored wood like this red oak or maple or pine or anything like that, it's usually not going to be a problem. You can see that graphite, no problem. But let's say you've got a darker piece of wood like walnut or mahogany or this is sapili. You start marking on that and yes, you can see that pencil mark, but you got to go over it a couple of times before you can really pick it out. This is where having the multicolors really comes in handy. Just take out the gray graphite, maybe put in the red. And now when you mark it, it's a lot easier to see. Still don't. For $7.99, I have picked them up and I have been glad I have, especially in a previous video, which I'll leave a link up here, to where I was making some Harry Potter wands out of walnut. This really, really helped in marking up the wood. Next on the list for $6.49 is a center finder tool. I wanted to start pretty simple, so I grabbed a small square piece of scrap wood. This center finder tool has guides on each side that will help you when working with different size or shape pieces. Simply hold the piece snug on the guides and draw a line. Then rotate the piece and do the same thing. Where the marks cross is the center. It works the same for circles. Here I'm using a dowel and this really does make it pretty easy to find the center of the dowel. Make your first mark, rotate the dowel a bit, make another mark where they cross is the dead center. Squares and circles are not all it'll work on. It'll also do hexagons and octagons. For hexagons and octagons, there really isn't anything different. Just align the sides up with the guides, hold it snug, and make a couple marks. Where they cross is the center. So for $6.49, I think it's okay. If I'm doing squares or rectangles, I'm probably not going to reach for this unless I need extreme, extreme accuracy on the center. I just go corner to corner, and honestly, that's most of what I do. But this will come out if I ever need to find the center of a circle for sure. Next on the list for $9.99 is something I have always wanted to try, and it's one of these universal sockets. It's got all these little punches in here, so it'll form to whatever size you want. I've seen these advertised on TV all the time. I've always wanted to try it, so it went under $10 bucks at $9.99. I'm giving it a try. It comes with the universal socket as well as a hex socket post. For this test, I put in a few different size lags as well as an eye screw and just went to town on them, driving them in and out. 
I went back and forth with these lags and the eye screw a bunch of times for a good eight to 10 minutes. I used several new holes several times and actually this thing worked really, really well. So for $9.99, I was actually pretty shocked. I did not think this was gonna work, but as seen on TV, works like as seen on TV. And last on the list for $7.99 is these little glue bots. They come in different sizes. I really like these. I've been using these for a long time, so I know that they work really well. And one of the things that I really like is it comes with this attached cap, so you can put it on, keeps the glue from drying off in the, in the tube, and it works great. It's always there. I can never lose it. What I like to do is take a Sharpie and just write which type of glue is in each bottle. I have a couple bottles, one with type on two, one with type on three. It's easy to grab. The thing that's really nice about these, they work at any angle. Here, I'm gonna stand it straight up and I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze it and you're gonna see it's gonna come right out, no problem. You can also take it and you can work it upside down, no problem. Sideways. That's the wonderful thing about these is they'll work in any angle. The other nice thing is you notice there's no drip. Once I'm done dispensing the glue and once I stop, it's done. No drip. It actually even comes back in a little bit so that you don't have a lot of mess afterwards. These are definitely a thumbs up. So for $7.99, these are a winner. I'd go ahead and get yourself a couple like I do. I have one for my Type on 2. I've got another for Type on 3. That's pretty much all the glue that I use is the Type on 2 and 3. Every once in a while, I'll have some Gorilla Glue, but for those, I'll just use the dispenser that it comes in. It's bonus time. My bonus product for under $10, Starbond CA Glue. This stuff is amazing. If you really want to step it up a notch, get some of their accelerator. Using the accelerator with the Starbond glue, it's going to make that CA glue cure in three to five seconds for a really good bond. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I've used Starbond for quite some time now. There are tons and tons of uses for it. I've used it for the old blue tape and glue trick. I've used it to fill cracks. And yep, I've even used it to glue two items together. There really are tons and tons of uses for Starbond CA glue, but here is a quick tip. Have you guys ever used these type of gloves? These are those non-latex gloves. I use them when I put on stains or other kind of finishes to keep my hands clean. Well, guess what? Starbond CA glue sticks to this stuff just fine. And I am not embarrassed to say that I have glued my fingers with the gloves onto my items more than once. So here's the quick fix. Get yourself some of this really cheap, old lunch lady plastic type of gloves, because guess what? The CA glue, it doesn't stick to this. I use this now whenever I'm using Starbond, that way if I get any on my, on my fingers, well, on the gloves, it doesn't stick to the item, just comes right off. There's your tip for the day. While Starbond has plenty of items for under 10 bucks at starbond.com, I will leave a link down in the description where you can use the checkout code BRONCBUILT save yourself 10%. Well, there you go. Just my opinion on 10 tools plus a bonus under 10 bucks. The item that surprised me the most, believe it or not, was the universal socket. I thought that this was just going to be a gimmick item, wasn't going to work, just one of the TV things. It worked great. Links to all the tools that I went over will be in the description below. Now these will be affiliate links to Amazon, so clicking on those and ordering through those will cost you $0 more, but for me, I can get a kickback on some of these as much as 59 cents. So you'd be doing me a solid if you start with those links. Hey, you know what? I've got one more special deal to give, and for the next two minutes, no charge at all, you can smash that like button for this video. And as an added two for one bonus, free click on the share button as well. And if you think I deserved it, consider subscribing. I'd appreciate it. Until next time, see ya.